Welcome back to Gig Harbor Paddling. Today we're gonna to talk about the rhythm of the stroke. The reason that the rhythm of the stroke is an important factor when you're considering technique is because when you add everything up together and you're smooth and you're powerful, that's how the boat is gonna run the best. That's why we use the word efficiency. That's where you get the most bang out of your buck. And so when we talk about the left side versus the right side for kayakers, making sure one side isn't inefficiently moving and it's going super high up when it's supposed to be lower, super out to the side when it's supposed to be tighter in, or our hips aren't shooting down, they're supposed to be held up to keep the boat up. There's so many little things that I see as inefficient and I want us to notice them to create a wholesome, efficient stroke. And when we do that, it'll be smooth and powerful, which is the rhythm of the stroke. What I'm looking for is when I'm talking about unnecessary movement, um, in this view, I'm watching those top hands. Are they driving directly downward? Mm. Um, obviously, if you're in the back, you're going to be steering. I get it. But at least in the front end of the stroke, are those hands going straight downward or is there some cavitation happening? Um, the larger person you are, the more you're going to have to have a little bit of wiggle room. You're gonna have to let your hips out of the boat a little bit. But Benji, I think you're doing a better job of it than you have in the past. Inefficient thing to do with your arm is bend it, right? Mm -hmm. That top arm, um, it's gonna create inefficiencies. So if you keep it straight, it goes directly to the muscles that you wanna use directly connected to the water that you're trying to move past. But if you bend your arm, there's just a ton of stress on all those joints, right? Mm -hmm. On the tiny muscles which you're dealing with. I really wanted to identify rhythm today. So I think uh, this K4 has good rhythm. Sometimes I'd like to move away from the word pause because uh, some people take it as to stop both hands in the air. But that's gonna stop some momentum. That's not, we're not robots where we just like go through the stroke and then freeze, go through the stroke, freeze. It's a drill maybe that we wanna do. But what we do is we go fast through the water and we're gliding through the air and setting up. This hand might be a little frozen in the front and then that hand gets in the position in the back, right? So if you are doing it correctly and you have efficient movements, then you're going to have more of a rhythm like this. You guys need strength and power to have good timing. So, you know, it's really easy if you're looking at dancers or ballerinas and they're, it's a super aesthetic sport, right? And so I know they look tiny and everything like, oh, they're probably not that strong or whatever. But in order to do the moves they do, in order to do it gracefully, they are incredibly strong for their spot, for their size at least. And so they are probably very powerful creatures because of that. So, and so we're trying to create graceful, rhythmic strokes. In order to do that, you need to have strength and power or else you're just gonna be a windmill. How can you be smooth and explosive? That is the goal. Because you can be super explosive and be really like inefficient, right? You can kind of get pushed away from water and, and you're not really holding your own. Uh, you can be smooth, but weak, right? You can just like kind of go through the water, nice and easy, but how could you be explosive and smooth? That's what we're looking at here. There's definitely some inefficiencies happening in some of the arm paths. Um, you can see the boat rocking quite a bit, but they're not, I hope, they weren't doing it so much that they weren't able to stay together. Um, it's a little inconsistent. Sometimes it stays level and sometimes it doesn't. What I like about Gannon in this video is that he's pretty smooth. He's keeping pressure on the water pretty well too. You see how much his leg and his hip is moving? He rapidly turns his hip forward to get as far up as he can so that when he drives, his leg gets maximum amount of 
connection to the water and he's doing it quickly. So I'm like slowly dragging my finger across the screen and you guys can see his body twisting rapidly and then kind of having a glide second and holding and then boom, boom. With canoeing, you want the same thing to shoot the boat forward, but there's so it's such a complex thing to keep it smooth, right? You guys are further away from the boat, your hip is further away from the boat, the power source, and so every little centimeter that you guys move your hip, it translates into a greater cavitation in the boat if you do it poorly. And so it's a very, very hard thing to keep the boat running smoothly and powerfully. It is not necessarily smooth. The way you can tell is look at the boat in the water. Don't even look at Benji, look at the boat. It looks like a horse, it's just like, <laughs> woo, here we go. So we know he's got a lot right here. He has a lot of power, he has a lot of strength. We gotta figure out how to smooth it out, right? And what I'm saying is for canoeing, it's a much harder skill to be able to smooth it out than in a kayak. So look at here from behind you. He's kind of just like, woo, do, do. But you're actually trying to get it out a little quicker. Do you see that? We have a little bit of glide in between. Just the start, just the ceilings. I want you to grow that so that it's way more obvious, okay? So instead of flicking your hand out at the exit, which is an inefficiency, I want you to try to have your power in the front, try to hit the water really hard. Don't try to pull out of the water really hard. So she does have the motion, what you're talking about. I would say she's gotten the smooth part down, yes. but the, the power, mm -hmm. the rhythm, so there's, there's, a, there's smooth and then there's the powerful part, right? And so for this rhythm, I like how she's smooth, but we don't have a really boom stroke. They have some work to do. Like, yeah, they have some resistance on, so the power is just a little late and they're trying to grab the water a little late, but when they're driving and trying to move their bodies past that blade, you can kind of see the frequency a little higher, right? Humans are asymmetrical, right? We all have differences left to right, not just canoers. So it is actually something to be aware of as a kayaker. Are my feet pressing the same? When I kayak, my left foot kind of veers off to the side. I don't know where it goes. It's just really annoying. And it comes back sometimes when I think about it. But I have to very consciously think about it. My catches are probably, one is probably a little weaker on one side than the other. So I have to be very conscious of my dominant hand. So, inefficiencies, right? We do not want to have the inefficiency of lopsided paddling as a kayaker. The boat is rocking a bit. And this is a common type of rock that I see actually in a lot of girls because they, they want to use all of their hip power so aggressively, but it doesn't always stay connected because it's just like a... I'm, I, please don't get offended when I use certain adjectives, guys, okay? But this is like a lazy leg drive because you're kicking hard, Kamal. Like, you're not being lazy in that sense, but what I'm saying is that the direction of the leg, it's just, you just like kick it straight back and down, wherever it goes. It's just like, boom, it's just back there. Claire, you do this too. So you guys have lazy legs in the sense that you're not holding your, you're not holding your hips up when you're driving, you're just like letting it kick back and down. We've talked about this, but the way I think of it is kind of like a lazy direction. And the next thing I want to say though, is it actually has to do with the space between the armpit and the hip crease just expanded. Right here, see the expansion? So this, I'm talking about the length from the um, armpit to the hip crease and now look at the compression did you see how much that it went from way up here to like down here it's not bracing as one solid unit and rotating it's like an accordion we don't want that because it's an inefficiency there's gonna be power leakage there's gonna be a problem with her rhythm and the boat run so she has power I like her getting her uh, stroke rate up. We were just talking about that, but it's not smooth. 
So all of you guys have the goal of being powerful yet smooth because smooth is fast. We want it to be like on an erg wheel where it's like a, it starts out like a boom, but it ends that way. That's why I use the word boom, like boom, not a pop, 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 because if we start powerful, we want to end powerful, right? And that's going to help the boat be smooth at the end of the power, right? This is a drill. Again, I was having him do frozen knee. We're focusing on the top hand staying up high, yet he's still able to move his hip quite a lot. And I, that's why I really like this drill because so many of us think we're doing what we need to with our hip, but we're actually moving it way too much. See how the boat barely cavitated there, Thomas? Like it's, I know right there it did, but it's pretty smooth throughout the stroke and it's because of the knee staying behind the hip like that. We've been working a lot on trying to maintain his zone low because of his back and I don't want him to go so much that it's irritated, but right here you're able to see he's moving the boat connectedly. Yeah, we could get more reach. Yeah, we could maybe exit a little quicker according to Jack and like there's a lot of things, but what I like is how we're staying forward and the boat staying smooth and he's still able to stay connected. And so that's the end piece about having good rhythm, you guys, is staying connected. Mm -hmm.